today concept is about optimization of basic blocks what it means is in the last class i explained about how to construct the dag from the basic blocks from the given basic blocks what it means is it the input is in the form of an basic block and we construct the dag for the input and we show the output in the form of an dag representation and here what the step number 2 is to optimize to perform the optimization of the basic blocks here in this i am performing two transformation techniques and what and what the transformation techniques are the first one is in common sub expression elimination where it is from the principal optimization it is a transformation from the principal optimization and here by the construction of the dag i am applying this transformation uh, what the name of the transformation is it is in common sub expression elimination and i already explained what the transformation uh, uh, explain about the common sub expression elimination and what it means is again i'm repeating that it is an expression appearing repeatedly in the program what which is computed previously make a note of this appearing repeatedly in the program and which is computed previously and that we can call the mazan common sub expressions in the given expression so one thing we need to remember that here for eliminating the common sub expressions we are actually target targeting for the expressions that compute the same value which computes the same value we are eliminating those common sub expressions right if it is already uh, already appeared appeared in further and again we are doing the same computation again we are doing continue in the same computation then if we find out such computations we can eliminate but just by uh, naming it as in common sub expression where we are applying the transformation like in common sub expression elimination from the principal sources of optimization we are eliminating that and see here we are having an example a is equal to b plus c b is equal to b minus d c is equal to c plus d e is equal to b plus d. these are the three address statements right and here where and where we are having the common sub expressions we are having the common expressions at a is equal to b plus c and at e is equal to b plus c because both the a and e are computing b and c computing b and c with the same operator plus so we need to eliminate that we are finding out uh, we find out that it is a common so common expression in the given three address statements so we need to eliminate that and this is before transformation after transformation what what the Uh, code is a is equal to b plus c, b is equal to b minus d, c is equal to c plus d. We eliminate one thing, one expression here. And here, why we are not eliminating here? Why we are not showing the transformation? It means, but here the results do not generate the same same value. That means if if we compute for the same value, that means the computation for the same value. whenever the computations for the same values are done then only we need to eliminate them just by applying the transformation but those are common expressions but do not generate the same results and here this is the first technique that we are applying in optimization of basic blocks the name of the technique is in common sub expression elimination it is from the principal sources of optimization here we are applying this technique by the construction of dags and just by taking the basic block like an a is equal to b plus c b is equal to b minus d c is equal to c plus d e is equal to b plus c we find out where the common expressions are then after finding out the common expressions just actually uh, after applying the transformation we need to show what the code it is right then but here we are not showing that why because here these uh, whatever the variables we are having like an a and e those uh, those variables are not generating the same result right so and what the next technique is and what the next technique what the next technique that we are going to apply in this optimization of basic blocks is dead that is an this is the dag representation for this for the common sub expression elimination Uh, a dag representation what it identifies is identifies the expressions and that yields the same result before and after both are same right but here just we are modifying or we are uh, replacing the b with an b not and c with an c not and d with an d not why because the right hand side computations are between a b c d there there is no a variable so 
the resultants are, the resultant variables are also a b c e like that so instead of uh, instead of uh, defining the a uh, statement with the variables just we are using the computations with b not c not d not and so on like that right and this is the direct representation of the common sub expression and here the second technique that is and dead code elimination i think you all uh, know what the dead code elimination is because this is also the transformation from the principles of the of optimization and there itself i explain what the dead code elimination is a variable is said to be live in a program if the value contained into it is used subsequently then only it becomes an live variable otherwise it is an dead variable make it clear when we said that it is a live means live in a program means the value contained into it the if the value contained into it is used subsequently for example a is a is having some value b is having some value d is having some value and c is having some value when you use the value subsequently then only we can say that that variable is an live variable otherwise it becomes an dead variable right i think you all understand because this i explained this in principal sources of optimization this is the most important transformation for having a principal optimization and see how to eliminate the dead code elimination the code generation from the dag eliminates the dead code initially i represent an dag from the given basic block here my basic block consisting of the three address statements and from the dag after transformation what my code is or what, uh, what my basic block looks like my basic block consisting of a is equal to b plus c d is equal to a minus d c is equal to d plus c see the both b and d variables are computing the same variables a and d with the same operator so i am choosing one where why i choose the one means b is b in here the b variable if the value contained for the b is is not at all used in further it is not at all used subsequently so i am eliminating the b and instead of b i am using the d that's the process of applying the transformation for the basic blocks and from the dag also we can easily find out find it out where the dead code variables are and after the optimization of basic blocks and here the next concept is about the loop optimization and what i explained in the last class means in the last class it is about the optimization of the basic blocks right and initially i start with the what the basic block is uh, what is an basic block and then what the terminology is uh, used in basic block and then and then the transformations of the basic block the transformations of uh, the optimization of the basic blocks and by learning with the first transformation in the first tra transformation we are having the two step procedure right two step procedure what the two step procedure is actually the first transformation is a structure preserving transformation right in while performing or while applying the structure tra structure preserving transformation what the first thing we need to do, do is first we need to construct the tag and then we need to apply the transformations is it clear what it mean is the the structure preserving transformation is in dag based representation so first initially we need to construct the dag and then uh, construct the dag for the basic blocks then the above uh, said information sir uh, informations can be applied what the above said informations uh, transformations means those can be principal sources of optimization transformations so in here this one this dead code elimination is a principal source of source optimization transformation and as well as the code the common sub expression is also an prince uh, transformation from principal sources of optimization is it clear now with this the structure preserving transformation is completed the structure preserving transformation is completed in optimization of basic blocks now i am going to learn about the second we are having the second transformation like use of algebraic identities i already explained about this algebraic identities at uh, a loop of opti uh, local opt uh, sorry at peephole optimization and there 
algebraic identities or the algebraic simplification is same instead of using uh, 2 into a we can use a plus a or instead of using a by 2 we can use 0 0.2 like that what it means is use of lower strength operators instead of higher strength operators makes the code efficient in such a way we are using those algebraic identities like a plus 0 is equal to a a into 1 is equal to a or a by 1 is equal to a all these are all the algebraic identities and these algebraic identities are used in people optimization techniques and also some simple transformations can be applied in order to optimize the code in, in what the simple transformations are like a plus 0 is equal to a, a into 1 is equal to a a or a by 1 is equal to a that means the corresponding identities can be applied on corresponding algebraic expressions and here the algebraic transformations can be obtained using the strength reduction technique make a note of this using the strength reduction technique we are obtaining this algebraic simplification or algebraic identification or we can also call it as an algebraic transformation and just by giving an example like instead of using 2 into a we can use a plus a or instead of using a by 2 we can use a into 0 0.5 and here what we done we done an strength reduction technique with that means we obtained the strength reduction technique and what the strength reduction technique is here we use a lower strength operators instead of higher strength operators to make the code efficient making the code efficient we are using such type of an transformations and also we are having the constant folding technique that can be applied to achieve the algebraic transformations with the constant folding technique and with the strength reduction technique what we are doing is we are improve we are uh, we are applying we are applying these to the these transformations in people optimization or at the optimization of the basic blocks just to achieve the to achieve uh, what what to achieve here only for achieving the code efficient right so these these are the two techniques that we are using at algebraic identities or algebraic transformations and here what the next concept is loop optimization this loop optimization i already explained to you all i already explained about the loop optimization and what is a loop optimization here the optimization can be significantly done in loops of the program make it clear here the optimization can be significantly done in loops of the program especially we are choosing the inner loops because inner loops is a place where the program spends a large amount of time and here the number of instructions are less in inner loops then the running time of the program will get decreased to a large extent and the, by using this technique like in loop optimization here in which code optimization is performed on inner loops whatever the transformations that are carried out or whatever the methods that we are carried out that we uh, that we are were applied only on the inner loops by using these loop optimizations and here or uh, what and what the transformations that are under the loop optimization is loop invariant code uh, code removal or induction variable strength reduction induction variable reduction all these comes under the transformations of loop optimization and here the concept is about in loops in flow graph First, initially you need to know what is a flow graph, then you can go for what is a loop and then what the dominators are and then how to represent the flow graph and the dominators. And first, initially you need to know what is a flow graph. A flow graph is a directed graph. Make a note of this. A flow graph is a directed graph. And here the flow control information is added to the basic blocks. The flow control information is added to the basic block. And what and what the constraints we need to remember here is the nodes to the flow graph are represented by the basic blocks. And the basic, uh, the blocks whose leader is the first statement that we can name it as an initial block. And here there is a directed edges. We are having an edges, right? So there, there are directed edges from block 1 to block n, but the block b1 to uh, edges from block b1 to block b2 that means if b2 is immediately follows the b1 in the given sequence we can say that b1 is an predecessor successor and predecessor we are having that 
B1 is a predecessor of B2. We can call it as in B1 is a predecessor of B2. And here, our examples uh, to show an example for the flow graph means to show the example for the flow, flow graph, we need to represent the graph, right? So what the input is here, the input is always in the form of a three address code. Three address code like I is equal to one, I, uh, T1 is equal to, T2 is equal to, all everything the code should be in a three address code. By considering the three address code, we are constructing the flow graphs, right? And here uh, we understand what the flow graph is by the definition and then what the rules of the constraint that are having for the flow graph. That means which can be represented as in basic blocks and which is called as an initial block and when to say it is in predecessor. And these are the uh, important terminologies that we know just by knowing the definitions. And, and now, what, what is a loop? And after knowing about the flow graph, and now we need to know what is a loop. What is a loop? Loop is a collection of nodes in the flow graph. If you know what is a flow graph, then automatically you can know that what the loop is a collection of nodes in the flow graph. By knowing the definition of the flow graph, now we are getting the definition of the loops. Loop is a collection of nodes in the flow graph. And here also we are having some constraints for the loops. And what are the what are those constraints means? All, all nodes, where all nodes, for example, one, two, three, four, five, six, and one to n. We're having n number of nodes in my flow graph. All such nodes are strongly connected. They, they should be strongly connected. What it means is always there is a path from any node to any other node within a loop. Make it clear. Within a loop. A path from within a loop. And next, the collection of nodes has unique entry. And here there is only one path from a node outside the loop to the node inside the loop. That we can call it as a collection of nodes as unique entry. That means from outside the loop to the inside the loop, it is only having an unique entry. And what the next thing is, the loops that contain no other loops. That means that that can be defined as an inner loops. Right, the loop that contains no other loops is called as an inner loops. And this is about the definition of the loop and the constraints of the loops. And up to now, I, I think you all understand what the flow graph is and what the rules or what the constraints of the flow graph. Or we can say that what the terminology is under the uh, flow graph is. That is an initial block or basic block or predecessor of or which which can be called as, which can be called it as a predecessor like that. And here also, from the concept of the loops, I think you all understand what the definition of the loop and what the rules to be considered under the loops. And here our concept is loops in flow graphs. Here we're introducing with some common terminologies being used for loops in the flow graphs. And what the common terminology here is dominator, dominator. And now I know what the flow graph is and now I know what the loop is. And now I'm going to learn about what the dominator is. In a flow graph, everything in a flow graph, after knowing the definition of the flow graph, then after that, whatever the concept I'm learning, th that uh, I'm taking the example with in the form of a flow graphs. So always I'm called in a flow graph. At the definition of the loop also, loop is a collection of nodes in the flow graph. In such a way, I define the loop. And here, while coming to the dominators, dominators also the input is in the form of a flow graph here. So in a flow graph, a node D, make a note, a node D dominates N, dominates the node N. What it means is every path to node N from initial node goes through D only. This can be denoted as D, see here, where represented as D dom N, D dom N. What it means is D dominates N. A node D dominates N, right? When it dominates N, every path to node N from initial node goes through D only. Then only dominates N, right? And here, every initial node dominates all the remaining nodes. That means because it is the starting of the node, it should dominate the remaining nodes in the graph, in the flow graph. And similarly, every node dominates itself. Just by how we are making a self loops like that only, the every node dominates itself, right? This, these are the conditions and this, this is the definition about the 
dominators and when how to define the dominator because dominator is one of the terminology in loops in flow graph and how to define this dominator means d dominates n what it means is the d the node d initially node d dominates and node n when it dominates we need to know when it dominates every path to node n from initial node goes through d only then only it dominates dominates n and that is represented as d dom n is it clear now and here we are having an example see this is the example for the dominator tree this is an example for the dominator tree what it means in in the see here from the flow graph we are representing the dominators from the flow graph only in the flow graph we are representing the dominators and the initial representation is for the flow graph representation and from the flow graph we are representing the dominator tree and here the node one is an initial node and it is dominate it dominates every node as it has an initial node because one is an initial node it dominates the remaining nodes and node two node here see node two dominates no node because no node is there under the two and coming to the three node three see node three dominates node four based on the directed path based on the directed path we can say that which node dominates the which one which node and here one see the node three two dominates no node and coming to the node three do dominates four five six seven eight nine and coming to node four it dominates five six seven eight nine right and five is not having it, it does not dominate any node and six dominates no node and coming to node seven it dominates eight and nine eight nine and this is the way of uh, seeing how, how the d dom dominates the n because we know the representation we know the representation and we know how when we can say that it is a dominator and if every path to node n from initial node goes through d only then we can say that it is a d dom n right so this is the way of representing the dominators and this is the definition of the dominators about the domain these are all about the dominators and next what what is natural loops these are some types of loops here we are having what is a natural loop natural loops loop in a flow graph can be denoted by n tends to d n tends to d what what it means is d dominates n means for example again i am saying that for example i am having that p tends to q p tends to q and here q becomes an head q is a head and p is a tail make a note q is a head and p is a tail p is not an head here p is an tail q is a head what it means is head dominates tail head dominates tail and that's the definition of the natural loops and that's the representation it is always de denoted by n tends to d or p tends to q and it may what it means is d dom n and here we are having some we are having the edges and these edges are called as in back edges and for a loop there can be more than one back edge in a natural loops we can have more than one back edges in natural loops is it clear now and after knowing how to represent the dominators and now the concept is about uh, different and different types of loops and here i explained about a natural loop and now we are having the other loops like loop interchange loop interchange what what uh, what what the meaning of the loop interchange is exchanging inner loops with outer loops it can be called as a loop interchange loop splitting what is a splitting or what is a loop splitting means here we we need to simplify a loop why to simplify means we are just attempting that to simplify a loop 
or we need to eliminate some dependencies just by breaking it into multiple loops and which have the same bodies but iterate over different contiguous portions of the index ring then that we can call them as a loop splitting and another one is an loop peeling and here we are simplifying a loop with a problematic first iteration and then performing that iteration separately before entering into the loop then we can call that as a loop peeling right and loop fusion loop fusion means here we are talking about two adjacent loops these two adjacent loops would iterate the same number of items and their bodies can be combined as long as they make no reference to each other data then such type of loops can be called as a loop fusion and what is loop fusion what is loop fusion break a loop into multiple loops over the same index range but each or each taking only a part of the loops body not overall body only a part of the loops body then we can call that type of loop fusion loop fusion and what is loop unrolling here the duplicates the body of the loop multiple times that means redundancy redundancy of the loops usage of redundancy then we can call them as a loop unrolling these are all or uh, the types of loops here and the next one is in pre header pre header and you know what the inner loop is inner loop is a loop that contains no other loop that we can call them as an inner loop make it clear what is an inner loop means inner loop is a loop but that contains no other loops and here the next one is an pre header these are the terminologies under the loop optimization make it clear all these are all the terminologies under the loops of flow, loops in flow graph and first starting with in dominators and then about the natural loops and then about inner loop and loop Uh, fusion loop fusion loop and rolling and loop interchange loop splitting and loop peeling these are all the terminologies of loops in flow graphs and what is in pre header here a pre header is a new block we are creating the block why to create means the successor of this blocks is the headers header block the successor of the block is an header block so all the computations that can be made before the header block can be made before the pre header block right is it clear now what is in pre header means what is in pre header means what were the control flows that used to enter the loop from outside the loop throughout the header throughout the header and enters the loop from pre header and again again i am repeating that here the targeted to the whole whole statements that are moved out of the loop that means move Uh, once recall what the code movement or code motion transformation is moving the inside loop to the outside loop right so as it is the same having some same similarities like that but here what we are doing here is here we are talking about the blocks right so the pre header is a separate block here it is created the pre header block is created new block created here and the successors of this block is the header block and whatever the computations that can be made before the header can be made before the pre header block is it clear now this is about an pre header and then this is about a loop invariant code removals and here we are having some loop invariant code removal uh, concept but before learning about the loop invariant code removal all of you should know how to re uh, reduce the flow graphs that that means reducible flow graphs what is a reducible flow graph uh, flow graph this is also an another uh, terminology in loops in flow graphs and here there are two types of edges forward edge and the backward edge and these edges having some properties like the forward edge form an cyclic graph and the back edge are such edges whose head dominates their tails whose head dominates the tails and that is about the residual graph and what is a non residual non residual flow graph means a reverse of that again it is also in flow graph but there are no back edges and forward edges may produce cycles in the graph but in but in the residual forward edges form an acyclic graph but here forward edges may produce 
cycles in the graph right and these are the two most important terminologies in loops in flow graphs residual and non residual flow graphs is it clear now and now what is about an loop invariant code removal loop invariant code removal and here this is one of the type of computation one of the type of uh, transformation we can call it so transformation in loop optimization and what the transformation is the what the name of the transformation is loop invariant code removal right and here we are moving out to pre header the statements whose source operands do not change within the loop whose source operands do not change within the loop that can be called it as a loop invariant code removal and what it means is here in this technique the computations inside the loop is avoided and thereby the computations overhead and compiler is avoided then ultimately we can optimize optimize the code generation ultimately we can optimize the code generation that we can call it as a loop invariant code removal and this is one of the most important transformation in loop optimization and here uh, what and what the rules we need to consider it means of uh, careful with the memory operations and careful with statements which are executed in some of the iterations and these are the rules here and just by taking an example like an a statement is what the statement is x is equal to y of z and it is a loop invariant and here by using this technique the computations inside the loop is avoided and thereby the computation or overhead on compiler is avoided right so y and z not modified in loop body s is the only statement to modify x and for all uses of x x is the available definition set here for all exit edge from the loop s is in the available definition set of edges if s is a load or store load or store memory operations then there is no rights to address of x in the loop and these are the rules if we are having an statement like that x is equal to y of z if it is a loop invariant then we need to follow all these rules we need to follow all these rules and this one the again see the loop invariant code removal can be done without available definition information what it means here we are having the rules that need that need to change what the rules is for all use of x is in the available definition set for all exit edges if x is live on the exit edges is in the available definition set on the exit edges approximate of first rule d dominates in the first rule number 1 Here the the D dominates all uses of X. While coming to the rule number two, D dominates all exit basic blocks where X is live, where X is live. And here, and coming to the next type that is an induction variable, loop induction variable. This is an next another terminology under the uh, loop loops in flow graphs. What the induction variable here is, whatever the variables we are using. in the code those variables that's what it mean is every time they change their value they are incremented or decremented what are it may be either incremented or decremented what it mean is instead of increment we are using the add instead of decrement we are using the sub right so here we are having three types of induction variables while considering an induction variable we are having three types what are those means one is a basic induction variable the second is a primary induction variable and the third one is a derived induction variable basic induction variable means here we are using an assignments within a loop or a, for example i is equal to i plus or or minus c or in the sense by minus c where c is a constant here such type of expressions or such type of uh, statements can be called as an induction variables here i is an induction variable and the primary induction variable is a basic induction variable that controls the loops execution for example if we are using the control statements with for while if like that then we can use primary induction variables for i is equal to 0 i less than 100 i plus plus and here i is and register it holds an i a register holding an i that means it is a primary induction variable 
and what the derived induction variable is it always in a linear function of the basic induction variables and after knowing what the induction variables is or the induction variables is then we need to know what the types of induction variables are and see here we are having an example for this this is the basic block basic block 1 and basic block 2 where basic block 1 is r1 is equal to 0 r7 is equal to ampersand a and 2 consisting of all the uh, three address codes all the three address code that means here there we can we are having some loops so in this we are having three induction variables right basic primary and derived coming to the basic the r4 r7 r1 are the basic the rules see in the in the example we are having what the r4 what the r7 r1 is this this comes under the basic induction variables the r1 is equal to 0 it is a primary induction variable and coming to the r2 where r2 is an r1 into 4 it is a derived induction variable and here we define from the basic block which one is a basic induction and which one is a primary and which one is a derived induction and next here the induction variable strength reduction again here we are creating the basic induction variables from the derived induction variables here we need to follow the rules like the statement x is equal to y of z and what the op, op is and any type of an operator star le, uh, relational operators plus or minus any arithmetical logical units and why y, y is an variable right that means it is an induction variable and z is an invariant variable here z is an invariant variable and no other statement modifies it is a loop invariant with the z you can show that it is an loop invariant method and no other statement modifies the x because x should define the value of the computation that was performed with the y and o z right so x is not y or z x is just a register it always defines and here in the induction variable strength reduction it is a transformation it is also a transformation here a variable x is called a called as an induction variable of loop l if the value of the variable gets changed every time that is it is either decremented or incremented by some constant and here insert the following into the bottom of pre header we know what the header and what the pre header is and now we are inserting it into an bottom of pre header and here we are using a function like an inc the inc function is nothing but an increment of x whatever it may be increment of some variable and with that function we are calculating the amount of increments for the first parameters so here how how the expression uh, written is new register is equal to expression of target statement s new register is equal to expression of target statement s if op code of s is not add or sub insert to the bottom of the pre header then what it is what it is instead of operator add or sub we need to use inc or dec inc inc is nothing but an increment dec is nothing but a decrement so new inc is equal to inc of y comma op comma z else new inc is equal to here i am writing a function for creating an creating an variable x right inc of x that is insert the following at each update of y then finally it can be written as new register is equal to because x is a register right x is a register so in the place of x what i am taking new register new register right so x x is equal to y of z is it clear for the z i am using new ink and for the y i am assigning the same new register so it can be written as new register is equal to new register plus new ink and here we can change that s is x is equal to new register is it clear now with the function inc we can create the variables here we can create the variables and here the induction variables and reduction in strength is only for uh, we can change the values at every time changing the values at every time just by using uh, the decrement or increment by some constants and this is an example here this is an example for induction variable strength reduction see uh, see one gets get the difference what the initial uh, my flow graph looks like and after applying the induction variable strength reduction how my flow graph 
looks like r5 is equal to r4 minus 3 and r4 is equal to r4 plus 1 and here what the new resistor is r4 into r9 and new increment is an r9 so wherever you are having this r9 wherever you are having this r4 into r9 directly you see here we are having see there is only change at the initial block and here at the r7 block because r5 is equal to r4 minus r3 and r4 is equal to r4 plus 1 and after performing the transformation of induction variable strength reduction my initial block is a new resistor it consisting of r4 into r9 and new increment is r9 and here see here r4 into r9 is a new resistor right so r7 is equal to new resistor and what the new resistor is what the new resistor is is equal to r9 right new increment so new resistor is an r4 into r9 so what the new ink is here r9 so here where we can where we changed is at the initial block and at the block of r7 we done the modifications by applying the transformation induction variable strength reduction and here to remove the unnecessary basic induction variables from the loop by just by substituting users with another basic induction variables what and what the rules that we need to follow first initially we need to find the two basic induction variables x and y then x and y in, should be in the same family and incremented at the same place and increments should be equal and whatever the initial values we are assigning those are also equal and x is not live at exit of the loop for each basic block where x is defined there is no issue of x between the first and the last definition of y. Make it clear. When we are defining the, when we uh, by taking an input from the basic block, for each basic block where x is defined, there is no issue of x between the first and the last definition of y. And these are the rules that we need to follow when we are implementing the transformation like an induction variable in elimination. And this is an example, see. And this is an example for the induction variable elimination. Initially, my basic block is with R1 is equal to 0 and R2 is equal to 0. Both the R1 and R2 are zeros. And again, while coming to the second block, and R1 is equal to R1 minus 1, R2 is equal to R2 minus 1. But the, here, there is no use of using the R1. No, no use of using this R1. Right. So what I'm doing is, I'm eliminating the R1. And wherever I'm having the R1, just I'm using it as an R2. I'm making my initial block with an R2 is equal to 0. This is my initial block. This is, from the basic block, the initial block is, label block is R2 is equal to 0. So just eliminate the R1. R1 is equal to 0. R1 is equal to R1 minus R1. Only by having, what it means is, if, when I'm calling it as a dominated tree, and this is an initial, initial node, R2 is equal to 0, this dominates the remaining nodes. This R2 is equal to 0 dominates the remaining nodes. That means it dominates R2 is equal to R2 minus 1. And this R2 dominates R9 and R7, R4. And this R4 dominates R7. And R7 also dominates R4 and R7. And this R4 dominates R2. Is it clear now? This is a dominated tree and this is an... Both are the dominated trees. But what's the difference here is, here we perform the transformation just by applying the transformation we get the structure like this by eliminating an r1 is equal to 0 and r1 is equal to r1 minus r2 see here r7 is equal to r1 into r then but instead of r1 what i use it here r2 and here r4 is equal to r1 but here it is an r2 right is it clear now and which node dominates and which node this is about in basic in here I apply the basic induction variable. Here I use in basic induction variable, just removing unnecessary basic in induction variables. Here what my unnecessary basic induction variable is in R1. R1 is an unnecessary variable, so I eliminate that. Is it clear now? And this is a graph like an, uh, here my graph shows about the complexity of the elimination based on what and what. Uh, the complexity of the elimination based on the trivial, that means the induction variables that are never used except to increment themselves and do not live at the exit of the loop. 
and same increment or same initial values are to be discussed and if it is in same increment initial values are a known known constants that means offset from the one another if it is in same increment nothing known about the relational of the initial values if it is in different increments nothing known about the relation of the initial values and from 1 and 2 those are all basically free and 3 and 5 required complex free header operations if i want to implement this 3 and 5 i need an complex free header operations but in 1 and 2 those two are basically free and this is about the complexity of the elimination in induction variable elimination and here we are having in case like this same increment but unknown initial value it is from the case 4 from the case for i am explaining this example at induction variable elimination and what it is is here we are eliminating just by looking at each non incremental use and generate the same sequence of values as before right and here see r4 is equal to r2 plus 8 right r3 is equal to r1 plus 4 here you need to remember that whatever the uh, transformation that we are applying here that can be done without adding any extra statements in the loop body then the transformation can be done without adding any extra statements in the loop body then only the transformation can be done otherwise otherwise we should not implement such type of a tran transformation make it clear here and here i am having r4 is equal to r2 plus 8 r3 is equal to r1 plus 4 and what r1 is R1 is R1 plus 4, R2 is R2 plus 4, and initially I am defining the basic block with R x is equal to R2 minus R1 plus 8, R R2 minus R1 plus 8, and what the R4 is here, what the R4 is here, R2 plus 8, right? Instead of this R2, instead of this one, instead of this 8, this place, this computation. i am using the computation like r1 plus rx what it means is what the rx is r2 minus r1 plus 8 this r1 and r1 are to be cancelled and finally it is r2 plus 8 is it clear now and the next one is an r3 is equal to r1 is equal to 4 r3 is equal to r1 is equal to 4 but here r3 is equal to r1 plus 4 but what the r1 is now the r1 becomes zero so we are assigning the four value to the r1 and now here in here i am eliminating this extra statement because i am eliminating this r2 statement i am not adding any any other statements to the loop body but i am eliminating this extra statement r2 is equal to r2 plus 4 and only i am using the statement like an r1 is equal to r1 plus 4 is it clear and this is about the induction variable elimination transformation and the next one is a loop unrolling loop unrolling is also the most important transformation here how to perform the loop unrolling means here we are having jumps right we are having the jumps in the code and the number of jumps on the test can be reduced just by writing the code two times just by writing the code two times and what it means is here replicate the body of a loop n minus 1 times instead of writing n times replicate the body of the loop n minus 1 times what it results in resulting in total n copies and here it enables the overlap of operations from different iterations and also increases the potential of instruction level uh, parallelism and what the variance are here when we are performing this loop unrolling transformation means we can enroll multiple of known trip counts also we can enroll with reminder loops also with while loop enrollment and this is about an loop unrolling this is also the most important transformation in loop optimization and with this concept i am ending the today's session because the loop optimization concept was completed and the terminologies or the transformations under the loop optimizations are discussed and in the next class i will explain i will discuss the concept of global data flow analysis